uh, we'll move on to item four, approve the minutes of February 1st, 2023. Everybody got a copy of the minutes? Um, any additions or corrections? <coughs> <clears throat> Very good, Bruce. Yes. Really good job. Thanks, sir. Any corrections or additions? We move to accept. The okay, minutes. it's been moved to accept the minutes. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, old business discussion of library. Did I miss anything? Discussion of library recreation culture tax proposal. A continuing item. Jeff. Yep. So I believe Ronnie on Friday sent an email to all of the board uh, showing you the survey. You had the, you have the opportunity to complete that survey as well. The survey will close on March 8th. So if you haven't uh, done that or, or your friends, um, please, I encourage everybody to do that. It is one portion of the survey. I think when we met last month, we had talked about that the general public would not have the opportunity to fill out the survey. And uh, the city is doing the survey in multiple ways where we get general public uh, feedback as well as there is a, a statistically valid survey that will go out that will also represent if we did go to the ballot what the results would, would be. So that's my update for uh, this month. The results are expected to be back towards the end of, the, of March. And when we meet uh, that uh, first week in April, I should be able to present you the those results and what the next steps are. Jane. Jeff, I did the survey and a couple of things came up for me and mm -hmm. I don't know if this is helpful or not, but in doing the survey, I thought a couple of things. Are these going to be um, increases in, on food and uh, property tax indefinitely? Or is like it a bond where there's limits to it? Um, and the other piece of feedback was I felt a little bit overwhelmed <laughs> by all of the things listed together and it, it had a negative effect on me and I you know I'm a supporter of this stuff but I got a little bit overwhelmed with this much on this one this much on this one this much on this one and then at the end and if we do it all, right. yeah. it felt overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm just a regular citizen, so. And could I agree with you? Yeah. That, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I, I, my concern is that it would intimidate people who really, whose opinion we really want. In other words, regular guys. Good I opinion. didn't survey. I didn't feel that way. For what it's worth, I thought it was. Um, it gave me a real good idea. I, I thought they really. I, I love the part where they broke down how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I, I just I, I thought it was a good survey. I felt okay with it also, I, but it, it's because, you know, we've been talking about it a lot right here, and that's why it might have been okay for somebody else. I'm not sure how that would have went. But uh, one question I have, and I think I see that, that was in Spanish also, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, I thought I saw that. I just yeah. wanted to say thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was great. Yeah, I'm okay. And was there something on there that indicated uh, what kind of an increase it would be, if, if I recall, it's been a while since I read it, that it was going to be so much per hundred thousand dollars on a home or something yes. like that. Yes, yeah. yeah, it did say that. How yes, much was did. that? Um, I think uh, it used to five hundred thousand dollars home. Yeah. yeah, and it gave a dollar amount of what the increase yeah, was. Yeah, I was wondering if anybody remember that. I thought it was no, I don't know. That's all right. Not, I got it. I can look it up. It's good to have that information. Yeah. And Janine, back to your question. So, based on what I know today. The property tax would sunset 
at the end of when the projects were paid off. Okay. The sales tax would continue because that's going to pay right. for the ongoing operation of these new things. It would be helpful in one of the surveys to, to state that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kind of shared the news. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Well, I was just thinking also that I don't honestly know what percentage of our community, uh, what percentage own their own homes, what percentage rent, and it, it, that kind of would be helpful too. Like, do 70% of the people that live in Longmont own homes and therefore would be affected by the property tax. Um, things like that came up. Well, no, I added up, <clears throat> actually I didn't add up very well, but I, I did add, add up the dollar amounts on the, on the taxes and I don't remember what it was, but it got to be, a, on all of them together, it got to be a few bucks. But, yeah, it's like a property tax. 255 yeah. million of the all tax. Yeah. How much? 255 the renters really pay for it too because yeah. there are yeah. yeah. And I thought that. Uh, Indirectly. Maybe. I, I, I share your concern. I was a little reluctant to, to say yes that I'd vote for him. I did. Because I, I thought it's the right thing to do. But I didn't think that I am going to feel it in the pocket. And so I, and and I, I think part of the reason of the survey is to get a feel of where um, those that, that fill out the survey feel about the, the broad numbers of programs. Based on that information, and Marsha, please jump in here, council will probably use this information to determine, does it all go on the ballot? Do we cut it down or, or how to move forward. So nothing says today that that full $255 million set of questions would go. Um, that's yet to be determined. Yes, uh, and it, it not just whether it all goes on or not, but uh, we will debating, be debating how many ballot questions to, do, to divide it up into. So it could be that each amenity is a separate issue, or it could be that they are grouped, like all, all of the parks and, and recreation stuff is in on one, and, and all of the cultural stuff is on another. Um, the council has, um, or the council and, and the city have, have already done two things, one of which did not make it to the ballot. Because last night, um, we moved to allocate some um, oil revenue money out of the general fund to partially fund uh, the planned work on the museum that would otherwise be on this bond issue. So you'll, you'll get about a 10% discount um, for, for that item going forward. The other thing to notice is, is that there is this deal which the um, economic development partners have just endorsed last night um, uh, to, uh, to uh, build the Center for Arts and Entertainment, um, but there is a private partnership that is going to raise the first $35 million to pay for it, and until they make that money over to the city, the taxes don't begin. So that tax would begin not now, but um, you know, probably three to five years from now. It all goes away if they, if they fail to raise the money. So that one is half price, essentially, to the public from, from what the um, amenity costs. Uh, and it also brings money into the city, which the others don't. You know, I mean, yeah, any of the private donors uh, committed at this point? Um, there is not the, 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 the um, the irrevocable pledge is is being drafted by their lawyers. I understand, mm -hmm. so nobody has. There are there are people verbally who have stepped up and said, "I will give two million dollars. I will um, 
you know, give this five thousand dollars a a year um, toward this until it's met. So yeah, there are some people who have stepped up, and again, the board of directors of the downtown. Uh, I'm not the DBA. The, the LEDP have endorsed it, and and the estimate is is that that the um, primary employers will probably who who really want this because it. Um, helps them recruit, um, that that they're probably good for 20 million of it. Um, you know, that's the hope. So, you know, that's that's what I know. Um, I, uh, I don't know whether it's possible to change any of, you know, the location of some of the recreation stuff or, or not. Um, um, Has to be determined? Uh, not. There's been no discussion of it except that, uh, you know, we have some strong indications that uh, our kids, especially on the north side, are in trouble, and that's all. Also, has the fewest public amenities for young people, and so uh, maybe at the council retreat, which will be before the council refers anything to the ballot, some changes might be made. I want to go on record as saying that I'm going to, I will support, I will donate $48.16. Okay. My portion. How'd you come up with that number? I just pulled it out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll raise you a coin. <laughs> I'll raise you a coin. <laughs> if you'd like to make that monthly. <laughs> uh, I did notice on the survey I took it also, and I noticed one of the first questions was, ranking all of the agencies in terms of overall importance and uh, senior citizens was on that list and i was just wondering i thought it was good but what use is the council are you going to make of that is that i i think it got a feel of, of where people are currently participating or using facilities was the driver for that okay I'm sorry? Well, the question wasn't asked that way. As uh, which ones you use? Use versus. Let me. What is uh, most important? Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. important. Yeah. Quite yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know. again to get well, a feel of, uh, of what is important then. Okay. So um, if that lines up in mid range, just to give you an example, that would help the senior center as far as possible funding. Sources, resources of some kind, or well, just not, not necessarily. I, I think it, it gives council good feedback of how important where the where senior center, center is. is. Um, but but again, the the <coughs> rec center includes the program would include the programming space for seniors. Okay. Again, not not a full center, but additional programming okay. space. And I also like the way they uh, they had you. Uh, how did they do it? They, they had to rank the various ones, you know. The project, yeah. Yes, by project. And I thought that was really useful. That's, yeah. uh, that's real professional, I thought, even though it's monthly survey. Well, yeah, just, you said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was Randy? acting like I still had <laughs> right. I, I apologize. I think we may have emailed about this, but I don't remember if it landed. Um, there's an idea that we could possibly mention this survey in our bi-weekly email that comes out of the senior center is that something that you can do that but just remember it closes next week oh, it closes next eight. week okay yeah. Yeah. that would have been nice yeah. all right any other discussion on that Mark? well i do want to say uh there's no rules that say you can't send out an email um on schedule before the cycle <laughs> that's true yeah. yeah once we hit august and it's on the ballot you and i have to play by a whole different set of rules right but for but for right now you yeah. could you know go back to your office and swamp mm -hmm. up a, a letter with that link in it yeah. and and there you go there's you know no reason you can't do that in fact it's encouraged yeah. but david we need a conversation with david all right, we covered that. Before you go on to the next thing, David, I just want to apologize in advance. I'm waiting for a, a call from Harold Dominguez to 
sat by the door. I will zoom out, but that's why I'm not not being rude and taking personal calls. I'm real no. time with this. <laughs> Uh, class registration. I guess that would be you, Ronnie. Class registration. Uh, what is that? What is that? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No, we're on the yeah, server. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Here, here, here. 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 Well, it's not at all the same, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you scared us too because we weren't ready for that. <laughs> yeah, last night I very carefully so got, so, yeah. got scouts on notes to myself to remember. <laughs> all right. Is this the agenda? No, this is my agenda. Oh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so it has a bunch of little things. And just keep going back to it. You're welcome. So you're talking about the survey, right? Yeah, so yeah. the survey results are in oh, here. Okay. So we're just coming back to... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is my written report. It says we're going to keep coming back to this at different points. But if you go to the second page, um, number three, so these, this is the collection of um, everybody's responses to identifying your top three questions for our customer service um, um, questionnaire that we want to implement here in our building. So uh, you have a black and white copy. I'm sorry, I meant to print it. It printed in color, but I mean, so your, your area is grayed off, but those are the top three choices amongst everybody. At the end of the question, it shows how many um, people pretty much voted for that specific question. So uh, number two, three, and four was everybody's votes. Uh, question two had four votes. Question three had five votes. And question four had four votes. So what everybody landed on was uh, where you provided information on where to access our classes and resources. Are your needs being met here at the Senior Center? And does our staff help answer your questions and provide you the information you are seeking? So um, now that we have collected these, th identified our top three questions, you know, our next step is identifying uh, how we want to roll this out. Do we want this to be in person? Do we want it to be an electronic survey? Uh, the mixture of both? So I'm gonna open that up for discussion at this point. Okay. Um... We'll deal with this before we go on with the rest of your report. I'm sorry? I say we'll deal with this before we go on with the rest of your report. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you all remember the discussion. We talked about maybe someone coming in, uh, each of us coming in once a month or something like that for a few hours and interviewing people. And for a period of time that we didn't really specify, that's one approach. Uh, What's your pleasure? What do you think we should do? These seem to be the most important issue as, uh, as agreed to by our group here. So what do you think? Julie. Is there a way to have this survey um, given to each one of the instructors of the classes that are performed? And maybe they could do something like that at the end of their class or hand it out? To the folks that are there, it's an, just another idea um, because you have an undivided uh, uh, attention of, of people, so they grab it as they go out, and then maybe they can, you know, uh, return it to the front desk or something as such. Administratively, is that possible? Can you do that? So what I'm working on with um, our our team is is submitting something similar, but it's more specific to the. Uh, to, to the class they took specifically. Oh, I see. And um, could we piggyback off of that? Absolutely and possibly. My only concern is, are we gonna, are they gonna confuse the two for, right. um, you know, are my 
question three specifically, it says, are you going to be met here at the senior center? You know, is that going to be confused with, with my when right. I need to meet yeah. with this class I just completed or this um, lecture I just completed? Yeah. You know, could we piggyback off of it? Absolutely. We just would need to be very clear of class survey you versus can head it. senior survey. You can head it class mm -hmm. questions, overall senior center questions, and right? Move, so it isn't confusing. And so we were in this work. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Um, in this work, we. I, I took a previous survey that they used to implement in the past, and it was I think 15 questions, uh, and it felt overwhelming. And so I worked with everybody with, with uh, you know the recreation team to, to condense it. You know, to me, some of them overlapped, and we combined. And so we we landed on I think it's six. We condensed it to six. And so with this approach, can we do this? Yes. And, you know, the whole purpose of us condensing was to minimize. Um, and not make it feel overwhelming or just another thing for our, for our patrons, right? So, you know, I'm open up that the you know, question I have is by adding three more additional questions, you know, is that going, is that it's still going to feel like too yeah, much? Yeah, do you hit that overwhelming right. point? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sorry, what did you say? Do you hit that overwhelming point going from six questions to nine questions? And one point would be that you know, would have to make sure that you don't get duplication because um, I'm in a yoga class mm -hmm. and I fill the whole thing out and then I go to a lecture do I got to be sure that I don't fill the whole thing out again so I only answer those questions once right yeah. otherwise uh, I don't get too Fair. many questions well, I'm sitting here wondering because I, I don't know <laughs> about what the best would be I'm wondering if we could take a week and travel, have somebody sit at the table and ask people as they come in the door or as they're leaving if they would answer these three questions. Right. Uh, and then we might, now if people didn't want to do that or we didn't get a good response from that, then we'd have to like put the questionnaire at the check-in desk so people could fill it out for the, while they're waiting in line. But that would give us a little more information. That could be like the, the next light people had a, uh -huh. a table. And it was very approachable. She, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, next light had a table in the lobby um, for a number of days, weeks, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. And we could have a, an advisory report. Um, okay. so it's, it's doable. So are we exploring more of an in-person yes. um, in-person option versus yeah. adding it piggyback? And I, I think the advantage of that, of including that, would be that people would, in addition to answering the questions, would talk some more and give us some more information that the survey wouldn't, wouldn't give us. You know, we could have a separate notebook to take down those comments. Or a computer there. <laughs> you know, these are such small, short questions that <laughs> I even sit there with a piece of paper and, <laughs> and jot down responses so they wouldn't even have to pick up a pen if they'd just be willing to you know, Jeff, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> something like, for qualitative purposes, it's probably better to have something like this and have just kind of a, a conversation, right. so, so to speak. You know, you get more, probably get better information. So I was thinking about that. And I thought, you know, if I was going to do this, and I kind of like your suggestion, uh, having somebody at the door. Anyway, if I was going to talk to someone, I think I would use these as a, a stimulus, so to speak, you know, to get people talking, and then just kind of go where the conversation goes. And but I, I make sure I cover those three points, but then add on to it where more of the qualitative kind of stuff that you're talking about. I don't know if the rest of you would approach it that way, but I think that's what I do. Well, most of them are yes, no. Yeah, in, that's in it. Reality. Yeah, right, right. Get your old counseling skills out. 
If you add a general like fourth question of, is there anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got something like that. Yeah. But the people who want to talk more can. I, I just wonder how many people you're going to hit in the lobby. I, you know, I think if you're going to ask these questions, it should go out in a newsletter. I mean, if people are on the newsletter list, just send it out in a newsletter. I mean, they can look at it or not, and they can respond. Can they respond in the newsletter? Um, I mean, not a so newsletter, but in a mail survey. Link, link, right? Yeah. yeah. So there, there would be ways. I would to think you get so network. much more information that way than waiting for people to walk into the lobby. Sure. And they're they're when they walk into the lobby, they're usually on a mission of going somewhere, and they're not may not want to take time to fill out a survey or to chat. I don't know. So you're not talking go. You're talking a survey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Agreed. I agree. I think you'd get more of a response that way. Surveys are costly. I mean, just post it. No, 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 email. 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 Oh, email. email. Survey monkey. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm from the 1980s. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Never got out of it. So this proposal would be an active link in our newsletter that they can click on and answer these three questions. And if they want, as Brad had mentioned, if there's an option for them to provide um, more in-depth responses, um, then it opens it up for them as well. Marsha. Uh, thank you, David. I was thinking, um, should there be a discussion about who you are to sample? Because maybe people who open the newsletter on on their phone or computer are a different population mm -hmm. than the people who just walk in. Yeah. Um, if you did both, you'd probably want to keep the results separate and compare them before you stitch <laughs> them all together. Just a comment. That's a good point. And you want to also have people coming in the back door, right? Oh, that's right. The front door. Mm -hmm. would, would you um, suggest then, based on what you just said, Marsha, first question is, are you 55 or older? Yeah, good because that's too. who we serve here. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're if you not, then thank you for your time. And mm -hmm. Yeah, just like the Magellan survey did. Yeah, that. yep. I think maybe we can do both and, mm -hmm. and gather information because at least half of the people I see don't use their computer. And I still would love to have their input. We could have a paper version of the survey. If y'all don't want to park in the lobby, we could always have a paper in a box. Yeah. Julie, you were going to say something. Cool. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. If you're like me, you know, if you say it, or it's gone. Yeah. Exactly. I have to go. I don't know how we, you know, how many days we've been talking about coming out. <clears throat> I'm the individual that prefers the person to person, and I do the uh, just sending things out. But uh, again, we that's why we're border. We all feel different about it. And I just feel that we would get more on people coming in than we would on the survey sending sending it out. My personal opinion. Well, we have at least two approaches: uh, email and face to face. Yeah. Really? Well, I propose that we do that we send out a link in the in the go, um, or even a separate email for just the survey, so that it doesn't get lost in the go. And then we, you know, choose some very specific time frames here at the senior center where, um, you know, people want to sit at a table. They can sit at a table, and they can engage and they can have a conversation with folks just making sure that they haven't, the people that they're speaking to, that they haven't already answered all of the questions in the survey, the electronic survey, and and do that approach and figure out, you know, what is the time frame during the day that we're going to do it, and how long are we going to do it for? Are we going to do it for a month? Are we going to do it for three months? You know, I don't think anybody wants to sit at a table for, you know, two to three hours a day for the next three months. So it needs to be realistic in what um, amount of time you personally want to sit at a table to engage the community that's coming in the door. I think that's an excellent link in the phone, you mean the newsletter? The 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 newsletter. Oh, the newsletter. Okay. Yeah, newsletter or separately. That was my separately. next question, is how, how quick do you want this? 
uh, information I have yeah. but do want the static because if you were aiming for the go, you put in the go, then that's going to push everything. Yeah, no, I was meaning the newsletter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, they've got a couple of different approaches. Approaches. Should we try both of them? Is that kind of what everybody's saying? Who's going I to be banning the, uh, the survey? Did. Yeah, we'll do the survey. Who's going to be doing it? Well, that's the next question. The in person. Yeah. Yeah. Those that want the survey in person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. The it, answer to that is yes. I'm willing to sit a couple of hours at the end of my work here and just experience, see if people are responsive or not. And if they're not, then you, then we know that they're not responsive. So, Randy and, and Jeff, you guys have been here the longest, and, and I just don't know that Ronnie is going to know the answer to this question. But it, it would be, it would behoove us to have somebody in the lobby sitting at a table at our busiest times. Mm -hmm. Right? And what and time? I'm sorry. Busiest time. Busiest time. Yeah. So I don't know what time frame, like. 11 to 1. <laughs> 11 to 1. Because you catch people who are leaving morning classes, you catch people who are coming for lunch, and you catch people who are coming for afternoon classes. Yeah. Are, so are, they, got, different, are they different than the people that come early or come late? There, you know, there are some people who just come early in the morning for exercise, and it might be nice to have, if somebody is an early, early morning person, an early morning shift. Like eight ten. Oh no! No no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that's uh, there's about thirty people right there alone, right? I understand there's about thirty people come in for the rec. For the oh for the, the exercise. exercise. Right? So, but if you've yeah, got yeah, one person, one delivered. volunteer, and thirty I people, no, you're I gonna understand. Have one or two people. Yeah. yeah. So that's and that's the thing. I like the box sure. idea and telling, yeah. Yeah. announcing in class possibly that there is a survey sitting on the table in the lobby that we'd like you to fill out. I, I think it could be three methods really: in-person discussion, mm -hmm. paper survey, email, digital survey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. With the email being distributed or the uh, paper being distributed in, in the classroom. In the lobby. In the lobby. Or just in the available lobby. at all times in the lobby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With some signage. Well, maybe we should break this up into pieces here. Uh, does it, does it, maybe we should just deal with uh, the components of it first. Somebody make a motion, if you will, on uh, we'll have three parts to the survey. So we'll do that first. I make a motion to have three parts to the survey. Okay, second. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? Um, I think we need it in Spanish as well as English. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, okay. Uh, can you amend your motion? I amend Spanish. my motion to have three parts to the survey, including in Spanish. Okay, so there's been a, a second, Sheila. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, now to the question of how long, how many people, who's going to do it, who's going to grab hold of it, all just, that. Just a minute. Um, right. When we're doing this, are we asking yes, no questions, or are we asking open-ended questions? We're opening. We're asking these Open three ended. specific questions. And yes, with room this, for comments. With, yes, these three right. specific com, com questions that we all were surveyed um, about and decided that these are the questions that we're going to ask. And then, if you're sitting at a table and there's open, if there's ongoing conversation, then you can take notes on that. Is that correct? Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. A mandatory okay. three questions, and then you can add to it as you wish. Okay. Well, and if it's written, yes, right it's done. written to have a space under each question for additional comments. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Is that okay with That's everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now, who's who's going to do it? And when? And how are we going to organize that? Well, that's. I mean, it, it, that's a tough one because obviously I I'd volunteer to do it, but I'm not. I can't be here five days a week either. So I'm saying I can come in, but I, I don't know how, if we had, you said 11 to 1 is the busiest time here. You know, you come 11 to 1, uh, you know, a few times, and I'd be glad to help with that. And different <laughs> days of the week, because, yeah. you know, there are different groups that come on different days of the week. See, that makes it So tough. spreading people out. Mm -hmm. That makes it tough. Makes it oh, yeah. tough to do it in person. <clears throat> yeah. 
because you can't do it in person just once. You need to have one person, two hours a day, five days a week. For how many weeks? For four, let's say we do it for a month. That's for, you know, four weeks. That's a lot of, that's a lot yeah, of time that's a for lot. everybody, right? It yeah. doesn't have to all be the same person, though. No, no. it doesn't. But if you take, there's, there's seven of us, right? Mm -hmm. So if you take, that's, that's one of us being there almost every week for the next four weeks. I think that's doable. It's I know, not doable in my world. I know you, you I am a full time employee. <laughs> I can see this as an ongoing thing for the senior center, like a suggestion box, with the questions on the box, with, you know, people. Um, I know at another facility that I go to, which isn't a city facility, um, they always have a box and they ask for input and suggestions and all the time. Do we have that here in the lobby? No. no I mean, and, it, and it's, it's um, what are we doing well? Uh, what can we do better? That kind of thing. You know, an ongoing kind of thing. And how, how often do they, does the administration of that building review? They take them out every week. Every week? Yeah. Just to keep on top, you know, that's the communication that's mode. Yeah. <coughs> I think people like oh. having that opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the rec center do that? Yeah. 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 What was the reason? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that, 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 I was just going to say, if we ask nicely, someone from Tinker Mill will probably build a, a really nice attractive suggestion box that can list the woodworkers them. here at the senior center might do that as well oh. we have a woodworking group i think we already have one actually because we used it at the open house in november okay. oh even better no delay mm -hmm. just, just, sorry, just some suggested you know simple what can we do better what do we do well um that covers We've already decided those yeah. questions. Yes. Yeah. It can even be simpler, you know? What was it? Okay, go ahead. I don't know if anybody wants to respond to you. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. I was just wondering, I know we brought this up a while ago and I might have been writing, but what was the reason we don't want to give them to the individuals, like in a class, like in a recreation class, give them all one, and if they turn in, fine. If they don't, just, or is it the paper we're concerned about? It was because. Sheila made a very good point is that what if she goes to yoga in the morning and she goes to a lecture in the afternoon and those three questions are on so as specific Ron would class. say they're specific they're doing specific questions that relate to the class that they've gone to and then we would piggyback onto that with our three questions so if they went to the same thing in 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 the same day right or even if they went to another one on another day, you would get those three questions. One person would get that three questions three times that they could answer, right? And we only want them to answer our questions once. Stand alone. And if I were that person that had two classes, I would only answer them once. Exactly. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that would, you know, a lot of people would just go through and answer the questions. Yeah. Because yeah. you might have a yeah. different. Uh, Opinion based on what happened at fitness versus the lecture. Exactly. Yeah, put you in a better Good. mood. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think ours need to be um, standalone as well. I think the classes need to stand alone and ours need to stand alone. Okay. So, and I've heard the idea. Yeah. out at classes with those three questions too. I think we're generally agreed on the whole approach here on how we want to do it. Uh, it's just, I think. My preference would be to someone to grab hold of it and kind of take charge of it and let them run it for however long they want to do it, month or two or three, forever. Forever? I, yeah, I, I really think it should be um, a limited period of time and maybe you do it now in the spring, you check it again in, in the fall or, or something like that. Yeah, well, I, once I guess, you, yeah, I kind of agree with that too. Yeah. It can't go on forever. And there could be comment cards available forever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me ask this. I hate to dump on you, but is there a staff that could do this? Um, we could explore that option. I don't want to say no. Mm -hmm. I just know that we're, you know, um, we have 
myself being new, we have, we have the new staff to so try to get their feet under them. Yeah. And um, we, we have our current staff who's been here, who's been juggling a lot, waiting for the new staff to be here. Yeah. And so sure. I don't I don't want to say no, we can look at it if that's the direction we go. I just don't want to also say yes to it in this moment. Uh -huh. and so so we could ask our volu other volunteers. Right. Yeah. right, really good volunteers. Mm -hmm. That would be a good job for volunteers. So this, this might be a different approach. I, I guess I think that Ronnie and I and Brandy can spend a little time um, and send you all out a proposal of timelines, a schedule of when we need people, that sort of thing. Because right now, I think we have the general feel of, of what you all want. Let us come up with a process and present that back to you. I kind of like that. Yes, Marcia. I was just going to say, because I have, for various reasons, been acutely aware of, of staff time being oversubscribed, I obviously cannot man a table, but I have some digital skills and I would be perfectly willing to set you up a sign-up genius to schedule the tables and set you up a survey monkey to put in the newsletter, and that would get couple, three hours of time off of anybody's table. So <laughs> when you get the thing organized, call on me. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, think, I think that would be our best approach is to give us some time and then maybe we outline what we think the schedule is and then maybe somebody or all of you could help us fill in the, the volunteer spots. Yeah, yeah. we can do that. I think everybody's willing to spend some yeah. time. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's what Sign Up Genius is yeah. for. Yes. Yeah. It gets you the volunteer spots yeah. Yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah. Being a new board member, I've got a question about volunteers. Do you have a, does the Senior Center have a, a pool of volunteers? Mm -hmm. We do. Who is the volunteer coordinator? Shar Sloan. As of this moment, Shar Sloan. Um, and again, with our new staff coming in that we're, we're looking to hire, that may shift, but as of this moment, Shar Sloan. Sean. Me being an ex volunteer director, <laughs> you use your volunteers yeah. for that. You know, the board is already volunteering, and um, you've got a you've got a whole pool of volunteers, and that would be just a wonderful place to use the volunteers. Are they overused? Some of them. Yeah. Some. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a good question to consider. Yeah. 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 Brandy, do you have something you're going to say? No. I was just answering Beth's question. She asked, Thank if, you, she asked if volunteers are overextended, and I said some of them, but not not the majority. Right. Yeah. But if you send an, e you've got a mailing list of volunteers, yeah. right? So you send a mailing. Here's a thing to volunteer for. Click here. Okay. See what you get. All right. So are we? I don't think we need a motion for that, do we? Uh, okay. So you guys okay with that then? And I suppose you'll be involved also. But, uh, okay, uh, all right, so you'll put it on the agenda next time. Yeah. Okay, as a follow-up, and yeah. we'll, we'll go from there. And it would be our hope that we get your blessing for that, and then we're ready to roll right after that okay. meeting. All right, everybody all right with that? Yes. Okay, all right. Let me get back to the current agenda. Let's say, annual report. Um, I guess the rest of you did not get a copy of the, the last annual report. So I, I just finished the annual report. We finally were able to get statistics out of our database and I sent it to David for review and wanted to, to see if he had any major issues with it before we sent it to the entire board. Actually, I do have some thoughts. Uh, you did a good job, you know, by the way. We can use it as is, as far as I'm concerned, but I do have some thoughts. Uh, I, want the, I would like to have the thoughts of other people too. I thought, well, let me ask first, how has it been, how has it been forwarded to the city council before in the past years? You have to get on the schedule to come speak at city council, I believe, and present it? Yes. Yep. And we had talked about doing that in May, maybe, for Older Americans Month. And who does that? Ronnie. Yeah. Gets, gets you on the agenda, yeah, Ronnie would do that. But shouldn't I do that? I don't like to speak in front of the group, but well, shouldn't what? I do that? There's two different things there. Yeah. Okay. Staff would take the lead in getting it on the council's agenda. Okay. I would hope that one of you would do the, the presentation because 
Council doesn't want to hear from staff. They want to hear from you all. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So what I'm thinking is that, uh, like I said, I don't particularly want to get in front of the city council, but I will. Um, and and I guess staff could help start the conversation and, and kind of set the table if if you all could hit the highlights. I I wouldn't. One of the one of the things, don't read don't read it to council. They 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 can read. So just hit the, the high points, and maybe a little bit of detail on those high points. That's kind of what I was thinking. Except uh, my thinking goes like this: that remember I've talked at length a couple of times about how we get to interject ourselves in the whole process between now and when the budget is formed. And I feel the more we can interject ourselves, the better off we are as far as getting what we want, whether whatever it is, whatever it is. And so I'm thinking that it really should go, uh, that this is, it should have a, your report is just fine. Uh, there might be a couple of places I might want you to enlarge it a little bit. Let me talk about that while, while I'm thinking of it, thinking of it will be going. Um, you mentioned in your report that depression seems to be on the uptick. Mm -hmm. How, how serious is that? How big a deal is that? How I mean, much, is it? How, uh, how much has it increased? Yeah, yeah, how big? Yeah, and I'm not sure how to answer that question. I know you don't. We you can don't certainly compare to last year. I think if we're going to do that, we should compare all of the data from last year um, because depression was not the only area where we had no. an increase. Okay. All right. So. What I'm, and part of what I'm getting at, obviously, is that if it's increasing due to whatever reasons, you know, that has implications for resources, you know, yes ma'am. Well, one thing is, the if, if you have the capability of comparing, at, you know, observations or whatever data you have the last year to this year, that is just nirvana, and, you know, Mana for the council. That's exactly the kind of stuff we want to hear, and especially Dr. Waters, who will probably fault you if you don't have that. So please do that. <laughs> well, let me ask. Can you? Can, well, do you have? Can you compare it to data like the uh, National Association of the Mentally Ill, now, for example, or state? You know, from your state division of mental health. I don't think we can. I don't think we can do a per capita kind of statement there because NAMI, I don't know what sort of data NAMI pulls, but if they're looking at national incidence of depression, they're looking at the whole population. We're only looking at the population of the people who come to the senior center and request counseling. Okay. So I can't compare apples yeah. and oranges that way quite. Well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I understand that, but I'm thinking we could make a statement like, in general, according to this source, this, this source depression is, uh, and whatever other issues might be increasing, uh, and we see the same same phenomenon here, and you can say that say that safely. It seems to me. It seems to me that's something you can say. Yes, yeah. Sheila. I feel rather uncomfortable about dis having an open discussion about a document that only you two have seen. Yeah. Um, I would prefer to wait to discuss it when we've all had a chance to to look at it. A good point. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Um, and, and something I'll note is that we could do comparison data for anything in the report. Uh, we could we have last year's report and this year's report presenting the same information. Uh -huh. It would be really helpful for people to weigh in on what what particular things would you want that comparison on? Because right now it's a six page document, and it could become a, sort of unreadable if we do that comparison for everything. So maybe priorities. Yeah. I've got a suggestion at the. Council meeting, we've all read news stories about how depression's on the upswing and um, uh, de uh, behaviors, uh, negative behaviors are on the upswing. Um, you could just uh, start with a, a an article from the New York Times or something that shows that, you know, from I think it all started at COVID, you know. Yeah. Um, that you could present it that way. Like nationally, we know from news articles that 
depression is really on the rise. At the senior center, we have statistics that show that there's an increase in people we are seeing with depression or calls that we receive for depression um, over previous years. And that maybe this is exponential. Same with housing. Can you slice and dice it in a way that you could come up with some sort of factual statistical base on I mean, I can, trends? I can certainly compare percentage this year to last year. And I'm going to tell you there's major skew there because during the pandemic, when our building was closed, the majority of the folks who wanted counseling did not want to do it on the phone or on Zoom. And so we, until May of 2020, what year did we reopen? 2021, um, we were closed. And so, of course, the numbers looked pretty different comparing 2021 to 2022 because people came in the full year of 2022. People did not come in the full year of 2021. Um, so I feel like we'd want to acknowledge that skew if we start mm -hmm. looking at percentages. That's okay. That's all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brandon, you have 2019? Yes. Because a lot of the stuff that I have seen about, you know, where we are, where are we now, compares 19 to, to 22. Well, I say yes, and it's it's in Michelle's files somewhere. somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let me say yes, and is it accessible? I'm not sure. We can look. We can look at 2019. Okay. <laughs> All right. Before I forget what you mentioned, Sheila, uh, Sheila had a really good idea she sent to me. Remember I said, I hope you all got the notice that I sent out a couple of weeks ago. So that if you had any items for the agenda to let me know, did you all get that? Okay, I didn't get anything, but that's okay. Uh, Sheila said, why don't you ask also that you give a little synopsis of what it is you'd like to add so people know what you're talking about? I thought that was a really good idea. So I'm gonna ask again before we have our next meeting, we had a pre-meeting. Uh, I'm going to ask you if there's any items you want to add to the agenda and just put a little sentence or two as to what it is in there so the people know. Is that kind of the, uh, what you wanted? Yes, what I wanted okay. to do was really to prevent people talking about, as, as with this situation, people talking about something that the rest of the board isn't aware of. Yeah, and I, I agree. So, okay. So, yeah. okay, so, uh, Brenda. Can I, can I ask kind of a wrap-up question about the annual report? Sure. Um, how about I email it to everybody? I can do that today. I, I, I actually thought it had gone over. So, sorry. No, no, no. no. It, was, it was just you. So how about I email it to everybody and we have further discussion at the next meeting with the lens of what are kind of the priorities where you'd want to hear more information or you'd want to get comparative data. And in the meantime, Robbie and I can look and see if we can find the 2019 report and be ready to draw some comparison. And that's sounds great. <laughs> okay, let me go back to the color there. It's amazing, I remembered that. I thought that a, a, a cover letter on your letterhead, uh, signed by me, maybe the whole board for that matter, but uh, to the city council, carbon uh, copy to the director, the department director, and a description in that cover letter of uh, what is, not so much what we're proposing, but what is, what's been done, that sort of thing. We'll, we'll, we'll save what should be done, or maybe you can make reference to it, but the main emphasis will be what is, what's happened, and we'll save what should be done to the resolution that will be forming later in the year. And in that, in that cover letter, I. I just talk about things like, uh, well, I jot, this is, these are the things that I jotted down. These are just off the top of my head, basically. Uh, the, um, the fact that we have a low representation of Hispanics, um, ethnicity seems, uh, should be reported, I think, and you said something about that, Brandy, last time that you moved in that direction. Um, electrification and how that affects the population uh, and other items that we think might be important. I can highlight some of the things, like I think I could translate some of the stuff that we've been talking about, the additional need for resources 
not so much as a proposal, but the fact that the counseling staff, the resource staff is overloaded right now. People have told me that the front desk is overloaded right now. And again, that's just kind of a reflection of what's going on right now. All right, so that I could just attach that as part of the, re as part of the annual report, and we could talk about all of that stuff next time. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the percentage of 55 plus in our community? We can get that very easily. That, that, that would be nice to have. Yeah. Okay. I, I have we that. It's about the agenda here in the It's about a lot. Yeah. And 65 in our in and higher is 16 percent roughly. So you add in 65 to 55, that adds in another 15 percent. Yeah. So we start also, with 55 if you're going to work with the council, right? <laughs> okay. Marsha, the yeah. notes are in the the manager's report. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see. On the first page, number two. Number two, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to stick my oar in in the sense that you said resolution later in the year. If you, oh. if your resolution is needed needs to be funded in 2024. Yes. Get it in by May. Yeah, by okay. May. It's, oh, I was thinking August. What, no, the, yeah. the, they're done. Yeah. In August, they okay. start presenting it to council in August. Yeah. Okay, so I I was just gonna say the same thing. Um, if you're asking for something to be funded, Ronnie will need to know that information in May because May is the month where he does the budget requests, and sometime and we haven't we don't have the official dates yet, but usually by the end of May, the system is shut down. And he won't be able to ask for anything else until okay. 25 for 25. Somehow I kept getting the idea that it was August. That was kind of the deadline. Uh, so okay, well it's good. Yeah, let let me do just a quick summer real quick. May is the time that uh, staff can make requests. At the end of May, that that is shut down. In June, staff is invited to a meeting with uh, the city manager and the finance director. And we are able to explain why we have requested things and why they're important to our operations. Then in the, the city manager and finance staff take all of those meetings and all those requests and do their magic with it to a point where in August, usually it's by the end of August, Harold has to present a budget to city council. So if, again, if we're asking for anything we need to we need to be talking about that in april so that we have the time to make the requests in may okay mm -hmm. you've said all that before and somehow i got the idea it was august but yeah. that's okay. when we start okay. seeing it yeah. so it's easy to believe that yeah but it's too secretly i mean the council can make little tweaks yeah but it really is just little tweaks we have no authority that's, like that's you said last time it's a little thing by that time okay Okay, well, I'm glad you clarified that. Thank you. Well, we've got a busy next meeting and the meeting after that. Well, this is the March meeting, so we have the April meeting. Yeah, we've got two meetings. Yeah, and so they can make requests in May, and in the a resolution from the board can reinforce and add weight to those, you know, budgetary weight to, and priority weight to those uh, to their requests. Okay. Don't make it look like the fix is in. Pick one or two innovative things to put in the resolution. But um, okay. yeah, gotcha. so May because because they can okay. you know that's when they're doing the the well, I sifting just, and. I just moved everything up in my mind by two months. Good. Yeah. Okay. Three months. All right. Three months. All right. I don't know if we need a motion for this, but I think. Uh, Okay, that is everybody okay with the plan? I'll, I'll draft the letter, I'll send it out to everybody in advance so you have a chance to look at it. You'll get the, get the, uh, uh, the annual report in advance and we'll talk about that and how we want it to look next time. And then if everybody's okay with it, we can submit it you know, shortly thereafter. Can, can I just ask Marsha a question? Does council like the information in the normal written letter type form, or do you like the resolution type of format? Well, there's a there's a couple of things. I mean, you've got a system that you yeah. put 
line item requests yeah. in. And that's council can't change that. Council doesn't even know about it, really. No, I'm talking about Dave's letter. Oh, okay. With, you know, we had talked about doing one with whereas is and all that. Is mm -hmm. that important to council? Well, there's there is a, a difference between you know you're, you're going to give it a, an annual report presentation that should have a, you know your six page document more or less and the highlights of it should be in PowerPoint and presented to the council so that's one thing a resolution that says you know we have the goal of of um, increasing our participation from uh, marginalized communities by 20% and you know and whereas these are our problems you know we we have we have mobility problems we have transit problems we have um, out you know contact problems you know uh, all of those things participation on the board and there now therefore we need extra facilities for these purposes um, that has more weight to the council because it's a because it's a formal goal that they have to vote on um, than just a line item request does. So we're, we would be proposing a resolution? Yes. Okay. That's so yeah, you said this here, Which is the highlights yeah. of the of right. Not the not the highlights, but the but the rationale for, for the rationale. one or two biggest requests. Yeah, see, I was going down a little different track. I was thinking we'd have a, a resolution approved by this group and given to the city council. You're saying, okay, well, we can still approve it. Yeah, it's this board to approves the resolution, okay, sends gotcha. it to the, okay, I'll yeah, and to make that a resolution, that becomes council action. policy. Okay, gotcha. Or okay. So that becomes, when the council, when the council does a resol approves a resolution, it becomes city <laughs> policy. Okay. So, you know, the, the council uh, in 2018 approved a resolution that we would have 100% renewable electricity, renewably sourced electricity. What if they don't like it? Then they'll vote no. <laughs> That's democracy. <laughs> yeah. But you've still gotten your message out. Yes. Do it again next year. Or or see what they didn't like about it, and you know, because they'll tell you what they don't like about it when they vote no. Okay. Um, and and yeah, it it can it's it goes two ways, right? That that's the feedback from council that now you guys are doing more than we can fund, or we're not sure that this is the right direction, or you know, so so yeah, you can go in circles that way. Yeah, yeah, it's a start. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, that's been very helpful. I uh, had to modify my thinking. I had this. Okay, so everybody okay with that? We'll we'll pick up the discussion. Next time on the annual report. But like I said, I do have some suggestions. And if you have any, when she gets the annual report out to everybody, if you have comments, make sure you get them to uh, Randy. Or to me, or to, or to, uh, uh, to Ronnie. And I get some feedback. Well, I, yes? I've been there. Would it be better that we CC everybody? No. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's a no no. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot. Conduct business through the email, so it's right. best if right. your yeah. comments go back to Ronnie and Brandy, gotcha. and then they can redistribute it to everyone else. Okay. Yeah. okay. Are we done with that? Okay. We're not done with Mars report. What's that? We're not done with Mars report. No, no. We're not. We're, 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 not. Done. we're, 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 we're done with the. Um, yeah, we're done with the animal report. Okay, new business. Hey, we gotta finish the no. report. What? We're going to come back. Oh, that's, on, that's under board yeah. That's under demographic report. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I don't have the agenda in front of me. I oh. just oh. got it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I lost it. Yes, you do. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Found it. Right. No, we'll get through this. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on to uh, board goals and agenda for 23, uh, 2023, we decided we're going to talk about the demographic report, the rest of uh, Lonnie's report first. Um, so, some of this information is in my my report, but I just did a one pager for a little bit of more information. So, we, we were talking about the de demographics uh, in our community, fifty five mile population. So, I pulled up 
some information on the Census Bureau website and um, just information from our other resor local resources, which was on our long time call, we did some reports on the rate the rate in which we were growing. So I was able to steal some of their information as well for this purpose. So identifying our 55 and older population, 20, 21% um, of them in our community are 60, 60 years of age and older. 20.1% are between the age ranges of 45 to 59. And 16.2% are 65 years and older. And just, you know, on, on the same topic, a conversation uh, you know we were talking about what the breakdown is for race and origin within our community as well so I, I pulled that information up as well so 68.3 percent white 23.5 uh, percent are Hispanic or Latino 1.2 percent are black black and 3.3 percent are Asian okay so the reason why I put it on the one pager as well is because last week I received um, the CASO data from Boulder County and it just shows the rate in which um, these uh, the, the 50, but not 55 and older population are aging within our community. So I, I just kind of highlighted a couple areas identifying 2022, showing where we're at for our 60 and older, 60 to 79 age range, and 80 plus. So the information that they provided is 60 and old, 60 and older are are 75,465 within the Boulder within Boulder County. 60 to 79, 64,354 individuals, and then 80 years of age and older, 11,000 in Boulder County. And so I just thought this would be good for us to take a look at because it shows again the trends that we're heading at, and they went all the way up to 2049 for those three age demographics within the Boulder County area. Based on what population? 140,000? For so it, it, for it Boulder County? For Boulder County, it didn't show. Um, this is just, I mean, th this is the information they provided. They didn't mm. say out of how Well, I see the graph has up to 140,000, and it's just, there's just nothing really to compare it to. We just have numbers. We're not comparing. It's just, okay. showing, it's just okay. showing trends, the trends in which we're aging within our community. Okay. So no, no comparisons, just looking ahead in the future. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Ron. Yep, no problem. So, and th that is accurate information from 2022 data that Boulder County pulled. And, you know, just on the same topic of conversation, you know, the reason why we pull all of this is just how do we, how do we better reach our Hispanic community to get them engaged in our programs? And I just, on the very bottom, identified a couple um, key highlights that we have here within our with Senior Center um, Control. We're offering 54 programs in Spanish, okay, um, providing additional um, bi-weekly drop-in activities. And um, worth noting, our, our dance our dance group competed, com competed uh, I mean not competed, completed 24 performances within the past year. And our senior, senior group completed 18 performances in the past year. Um, again, just identifying and highlighting what, what we are providing to our uh, Hispanic community members. Um, from the support side, um, Support was given to 47 different care caregivers, 18 persons in grief and loss support, and 19 Latino customers in Spanish-speaking support groups as well. So just for the sake of this con the conversation that we had last time, I thought this is you know, good information to bring back to the board just to share, um, you know, again, what our demographics are, what we're projecting in the future, and what we're currently doing um, to support our Hispanic community in Boulder. That's a dream. I know it's difficult because COVID skewed statistics, but overall, are we doing a better job of reaching out to our Hispanic community? Are we getting better responses now in the senior center than we had before? Or let's compare to 2019 anyway. I can speak anecdotally from the service side of things. Um, in 2019, we had two resource specialists, one of whom is bilingual Spanish-English, one of whom is English-speaking, and our Spanish-speaking resource specialists primarily served Spanish speakers mm -hmm. because there was such a high volume of need. 
we were able to add two more resource specialists during the pandemic, one um, specifically at the LHA properties who was bilingual and served about 10% of her caseload Spanish speakers, but also another full-time resource specialist here at the senior center whose caseload is at least half Spanish speaking mm. at all times. And it, it can kind of fluctuate between the half and 75%. Um, so we have increased our capacity on the resource side of things to serve Spanish speakers pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. And I will say Veronica's caseload continues to be primarily Spanish speakers. <laughs> she does serve English speaking folks as well, but there is there's just a high need there. Rosie, I'm sorry. Rosie. Do we know if the Hispanic population is increasing percent wise versus the non Hispanic population? Mm -hmm. That one I would not be able to. Uh, pull until we get the 2022 census uh, data, okay. and that, that just allows us to compare 2021 to 2022, but 2022 is not out. Yeah, Marsha. Yeah, uh, uh, Brandy, for data gathering um, and and utilization of mental health services, in the population as a whole, not just the Hispanic population, is in terms of access to medical care in general, is going to fall into three categories. You've got the um, 65 and olders who have universally have Medicare and maybe something else. You have a certain percentage of them that have Medicare and Medicaid and then the below 65 might have Medicaid, might have private insurance, might be uninsured and their access needs are going to be radically different. Mm -hmm. So it would be really interesting to, um, to collect their insurance status when those services are given and they don't mind revealing it. When people tell us if they have insurance, we do track that, but we don't require everyone to provide that information, just like we don't require them to provide their gender identity or their race sure. or ethnicity. We only require that when there's an application that actually requires that and we have to ask. Mm -hmm. But people so, tell us voluntarily, so yeah. we do have some data on that. Yeah, I'd be interested in knowing how many refuse, actually. It's well, like, yeah, people are, people are people are private, private about their, yeah. why are you asking for that? I, yeah. I came here to get assistance with X, why are you asking me about yeah. Y and Z? Right, and you're absolutely right. It would, would not make it, want to make it be an off-putting thing. But at the same point, it's, it's, it bears on the funding of the service. Yeah. So, Well, I would say insurance status does not bear on their ability to get service here because we don't charge any insurance for anything. No, but, it, but what, what it does bear on is, and again, this, is, this facility is probably the most accessible, um, but some people have access to other sources of mental health aid and some people don't. Mm -hmm. and that, matter. Um, I would also like just for everybody to note the, the biggest increase in population on that graph is the over 80s. Mm -hmm. That's a far bigger increase than any of the other age groups. 244%. Mm -hmm. Is that over a decade? Mm -hmm. or is that, anyway, I yeah. read that in the, in the area report. So I'm sure 44%. that uh, the senior center would have to yeah. accommodate that. Yeah be aware of it. It's I think that that would be a point that I would highlight. Mm -hmm. I had a yes, clarification sir. on the Spanish programs on number three provide support via the group. Are we talking about is that including the the individuals that the resource specialists have on their load or no this is just looking that bullet point just looks at support groups okay and the, and the caregiver it. support groups and grief and loss support groups are offered in english specifically but we also have a spanish speaking support group that is a general aging kind of support group that has had 19 folks attend i will say on the programming side of things i have grown spanish programming as much as my caseload will allow um, and that's part of why we're trying to figure out hiring the three-quarter time bilingual Spanish coordinator because they, as a monolingual English speaker who speaks un poco español, 
I cannot grow this the way it needs to be grown. And that's not really my job. It's one of those things that sort of fell into my job. Um, but I'm not a, I'm not a full-time programmer and we need a programmer who has more time to really devote to growing those programs. And I think I've asked this before, but the majority of the uh, Spanish speaking uh, are with the resource specialist for coming in for services for that, right? Am I not, or am I not? Are you asking what, what percentage a, of people's time is spent in programs versus right. services? That, That's really hard to parse out. Right? Okay. Um, I'm just curious. Because, I mean, that's been a few times that I have been here. I don't come here often, but when I do come, uh, you know, I notice that the Spanish speaking are always here with C. Veronica or one of the others right. that are here. If you talk about capacity, so in the, in the resource specialist capacity, half of our staff have been able to see Spanish speakers, right? Programming capacity, if you look at the go, we have a 60 page catalog, two to three pages of that are programs in Spanish. <laughs> Very different capacity. Okay, yeah. just curious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can nail this down. Um, on the ethnicity data, I know you've been reluctant to, to collect that data. In fact, you said you, you didn't do it for a variety of reasons. We talked about this months ago. And I thought you said that you're going to cons considering uh, collecting that data again. Right now, no? Did I miss? I, I think, yeah, I think you misunderstood. I guess I did. Um, what I, I don't know if VSI has the capacity to track that data Not for sure. programming. Yeah. So that's, that's the majority of people's usage of our building, right? Is programming. Right. So I don't know if there's even the ability to track that data there. For supportive services, we do have the ability and we do gather it either when people offer it or when we have to ask for applications, but we have never made it our policy to ask folks those questions every for every single person who walks in the door for supportive services. Well, if we're gonna make the case, I'm thinking if we're gonna make the case that part of the services we need to expand are working Spanish, and we know 25% of the population is, uh, or 23, 24% of the population is Hispanic, and they probably have about the same kind of problems as the rest of us, proportionately. How do we make the argument that, that they're underserved if we don't have any statistics? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, I, I don't know how you make the argument. I was about to say, I don't think it's a correct assumption that they have the same set of needs. Well, I, I agree. Because I there's, really you know, there's yeah. an income yeah. disparity. I, I agree, yes. Um, but, um, and several others, actually, disparities. Uh, but I, I did want to also point out, Brandy, because you made it sound so awful that the, you know, that the, there are a number of, of, of programs like pool playing and Zumba that are not very language dependent at all. You know, anybody can go into Zumba if, if, if they're from Dupet, they can still take a Zumba class and know what to do. So. So, so it's really misleading just to count programs that are offered only in English. They need, if you need to do evaluate that, and I'm not sure you do, you'd have to score the programs as language dependent as well. Can I speak to that? Yes. Um, we have actually so talked about that before. How do, how do we reach our Spanish speaking customers and encourage them to go to trips, programs, drop in groups that aren't so language dependent? And what we have found is that it really relies on outreach. That, that if you don't speak the language that is being spoken by the instructor in a class, you are very unlikely to go try that class out unless somebody does some outreach and talks to you and says, oh no, this teacher is really great and they'll work with you. And we need a Spanish speaking programmer to do that outreach. <laughs> we, we have utilized Monica at our front desk and Veronica on the resource team and now Melissa on the resource team do some of that research, that outreach, and they really just have a limited capacity for that in their jobs. So again, this mm -hmm. all things point back to a Spanish programmer. That seems, <laughs> yeah. like, that seems like a major need. Mm -hmm. it seems but getting back to your question, yes. David, what was your question? How are you going to I don't talk know. to council? Yeah, I don't know. About the needs I could of use some the Latino population 
when we don't have those I mean, that's what he's asking for help with, right? But we yeah, have it in the community. I, and correct me if you think I'm off base here, Jeff and Ronnie. I think it's very easy to look at this statistic that 23% of our county is Latino, and that I think is actually a slightly higher percentage in Longmont. And to say we have zero percentage of our programming staff that is Spanish speaking. Yeah, and those that's statistics. A great statistic. that's, no, all I, of those statistics are Longmont specific. Okay, Longmont. At the very top. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a very easy analysis to make that we're. Mm -hmm. I think I can put together a rationale based on generalities uh, from different sources, overall trends that probably apply here, and to punctuate it with specific examples like you just did, which would be fairly compelling, I think. Mm -hmm. We don't have the data, we can make the rationale. Well, we do have some data. Yeah, some data. Yeah, got some. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, 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 in my opinion, that's a tough one. You know, but we can do it. Well, if if we had the data, let me let me throw this out there. Okay. If we could, if we did, if VSI tracked programming wise, the ethnicity and race, and we could say. 2% of the folks who come into the Senior Center for Programs are Spanish speaking. That data is heavily skewed because we don't offer enough programming in Spanish that we would have more than the 2% right. coming in. So exactly. It, <clears throat> I don't think that that necessarily gets you the information that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's a chicken and egg. Yeah. Well, Time. But you could make arguments like, for example, you know, the, uh, the rate of depression runs around maybe two, three percent of the population. All right, and it's probably higher among Hispanics than among oh. Latinos. They're probably a little bit lower income, have less education. And I'm just making some generalities here, and that would be correlated with depression. So you could make that kind of argument that the depression rates among Hispanics are probably higher than the overall rate in the city or something like that. But I think you could still make the argument that we have zero Spanish-speaking counselors <laughs> exactly. in, a, in a population that's 24% yeah, that, right. <laughs> that doesn't matter. I yeah. mean, the facts, I mean, the numbers don't matter in that yeah. case. You but don't have any. We just, we know the need exists. We know the yeah. need is not met. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably the best. There you go. I, yeah, okay. Well, we could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, anything more on the annual report? I'm worn out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Next item. Uh, okay. We'll continue with your report, Ronnie. Yeah, that's fine. We can jump in. Okay. Um, so I'm going to bounce around a little bit. We're going to jump to number four. And the reason why is uh, we brought Amanda Berto in, and I just want to introduce her to everybody. And Amanda is our new recreation supervisor. Everyone. Started with us last week. So I just wanted to bring her in and introduce her and have her nice meet all of you. Welcome, everybody. Yep. Welcome. 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 Good, thank you. And your name again? My name is Amanda Alberto. I'm and sorry, which, last name? Alberto, A B U R T O. Which center will you be supervising? Here. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, here. Oh, <laughs> yes. duh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm the new uh, senior supervisor. What was the first name? Amanda. Amanda. Amanda uh, came in last week, and she's 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 coming from Brighton. A um, lot of lot of experience over there, and we're, we were fortunate to steal her, bring her part of our team, and she jumped in last week and um, already hit the ground running. I mean, so she's she's been here for a short period of time, but. We're doing a great job getting to know our, our, our team, our staff, and, uh, and our patrons as well. So, so um, I have a background in VSI with Rec Track, so I was the main person in Brighton doing that. And then since then, we have switched over to a different um, program system. So I do have um, background in Rec Track, and just overhearing that's not necessarily numbers that we could run with the demographics that you were asking earlier. Um, and then um, programming experience. So I have quite a number of years of programming. 
been working in a municipality for the last 25 years in some sort of form. Um, and then seven years with the city of Brighton and then previously um, with other cities in California. Right. So you come from the senior wow. center in Brighton? Uh, no, I do not come from this. I come from the recreation center. Recreation right. center. Mm -hmm. So I was a, responsible for their front desk and their facility operations, um, as well as their water park operations. I was just born and raised in Brighton, so I just can't. Oh, nice. It. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm the rec center, not evac. Okay. Good. Good. Nice to meet everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Door is open. Yeah. I'm where everyone else's offices are. So I'm right next to Shar, if you guys know where Shar's mm -hmm. office is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shar's next to your office. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting everybody. Nice meeting you. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so yeah, just want to provide some staffing updates so everyone kind of has an idea where we're at. And I think it's always celebrating that we're, 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 That's we're collectively and slowly bringing our pieces together. And, um, and um, it, it's take it's taken some time, and we're again we're getting there. So you just met Amanda. Uh, we also just got confirmation today that we're moving forward with Maria Reyna, who will be our new evening custodian, and she'll be joining us hopefully in the next few weeks. So she just cleared everything. That's a lot to celebrate right there. Excuse me, her name again. Maria Reyna. How do you spell her last name? R e y n a. Okay. So. We got confirmation and Maria will be on board and joining us here shortly. Uh, we also just received, and this was, was this this week or last week? Uh, we just got confirmation that um, we are moving forward with our LHA resource specialist, uh, Valerie Almanzar Garcia. Um, she'll be starting up, starting with us uh, the 27th, is it 27th of this month? Got it right, 27th yes. of this month. And was that this week that she cleared everything? Yeah. Okay, all my weeks are really starting to, <laughs> to and so again, all these key pieces are slowly coming together. And now um, we'll have two Veronica Garcia taking it. Well, well, we'll have two Garcias, but she's Valerie. Oh, Valerie, that was the Veronica. It will certainly cause confusion. <laughs> <laughs> so Valerie will be joining us uh, towards the end of the oh, month. Okay. So we're still working on two additional positions. Uh, our therapeutic recreation coordinator position, we are moving forward with interviews next week. So that's another key piece um, that'll be joining our team, hopefully here in the, in the short term <laughs> future. And our three quarter recreation coordinator position, which um, uh, Brandy was just speaking towards um, in our last discussion. So we're in the works of piecing that together and um, so that we can get it posted and, and begin the hiring process for that. So just wanted to share that again a lot a lot has happened in a short period of time. These are key pieces, and we're just slowly, slowly get assembling our team to where we can start start operating in a way that um, you know where we can. Well, our our current team can start taking a little less off the road, and we can go to um, the correct spaces. <laughs> so we just feel like we are. Um, you know, I, I don't want to feel like we feel like we're overwhelmed, but so we're not feeling like we're overwhelmed. Right, so we're coming together there. That's great. Can I give yeah. kudos to Ronnie here that he he's helping as a new employee himself to hire and train all of these new employees. Yeah. It's a lot to take on in your first two months yeah, of a job. It does. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And he works late at night. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, that's right. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna jump back to number one. So I just want to cover that since we had a magic here. So I do have a foot care update. So good news. Wow. <laughs> yeah. so well, the never ending story. <laughs> right? So I'm going to just pass them this way and pass them that way. So I was able to connect with um, a representative from the Colorado Visiting Nurses Association, CVNA, to kind of get more information for the services they provide. And so I was able to ask the questions that we had collectively um, that th th through the board and just so I can come back with specific information as to, again, do they, will this, can, can they meet our needs? Are they offering the services that we are looking for? Um, and so that's just, asked her to send me a little handout. So that's just kind of a little flyer with um, some information from them specifically. So big, big key takeaways that, um, to, to some of the questions we had. So some of the questions we had as a board were, 
you know, do they provide on-site care? Is it more educational care? Um, what do they offer, right? And so the, the, the information provided me, it is basic foot care, okay? They do check for blood pressure and they do check for injuries. So a question we had as a board was, okay, well, what do they do with that? They don't, if they, can they treat on-site? So her response is they cannot treat on-site. And the reason why is because they are RNs, so registered nurses, they're not doctors. So what they do though is, uh, is for anybody they see, they collect their health information. So if they do recognize anything of concern, they connect the dots. They will reach out to their healthcare providers to say, hey, uh, just saw a patient XYZ, and um, this, is, this is something that I noticed an area of concern. You know, we would appreciate if you, as a healthcare provider, follow up uh, with this person. So they don't provide on-site care because they're not doctors, but they connect those dots for uh, anybody that they see. That they see. Another concern we had was, you know, what, what about diabetics? Do they turn them away? Uh, her immediate response was, no, never. We, 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 we treat diabetics as any other patient. Um, we said that's actually who we want to see. We want to be able to provide that 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 care to um, diabetics as well. So, uh, you know that. That, that, that was a big concern at our last conversation, and I think, you know, uh, it's worth noting that again, that they treat anybody who, who signs and up. And the diabetics be the ones that don't know they have an injury. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's what she was saying. That's the ones we want to see that we can support mm -hmm. and help as well. So, um, you know, uh, another thing, so if this is a direction we want to go, it, you know, it, it's not something we could start up right away. So we're basically on a waiting list. But the good news with that is um, in, our, in our area, we're at the front of the list. There's nobody in front of us. So what she is currently doing, and she saw this as a good opportunity as well. She's like, I was, I've been looking for someone to, to connect the dots from Boulder County all the way up to Fort Lupton. She says that this would be perfect. Um, so what she's doing is, is, is um, putting it out there that she's looking for our ends and she's going to start conducting interviews and so uh, that's gonna take time for her right and she said so once she's able to find anybody if this is something we wish to move forward with then we can start having discussions on dates and availability um, so it's based off of the nurses availability so of course we can say we want these dates right because this is what works best for us with there being a, 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 a shortage of nurses we have to be flexible to their availability because they're doing additional things outside of of this service that they'd be providing as well. So she's gonna um, work to, to ge generate that staff and then we can begin having a conversation of dates and times. So in the interim, before they could get somebody here, they would call that number. Right, and she could connect the dots to current locations. And of course there'd be um, a So they don't list. go to people's, it says visiting nurse association, they don't go to people's homes? No. Okay. No. But she can connect the dots to where um, they're currently providing care in our, near our direct area. Again, she said all the way up to Fort Lupton and as close as um, uh, Boulder, right? So, um, so, yes. Will we have scholarships for the $55 fee like we do for some of the rent programs? That's worth a discussion, um, you know. I just this is see being in the infancy stages of, 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 of the planning. So many cannot afford. Right. Budget light on you. Right. <laughs> right. Ronnie. Yes. Because at the moment this isn't available to our community, mm -hmm. could we get information about the UC Health Clinic and what their charges are? And what their days are right. I blame you real quick. Sorry, I passed all of them out. Didn't save myself one. Um, so could we look at that and, and be able to promote that in the meantime? Absolutely, right. Yeah. Uh, but as a comparison for, you know, what they offer versus what they offer, I asked her. You know, uh, it, it, is the cost comparable? And she said it's it's right in that same range. She said some go over, some go under. Um, there's not very many options right now. She said outside of them, she said there's maybe two of them, um, and they're, they're private practices. So. Well, I know that UC Health has one, um, but I don't know what their charges are, and I'm just thinking if somebody sure. is in need, they're local, and I think they do it through their outpatient clinic, 
which is why they weren't willing to come here, because they had their own clinic. I can look at so, find that information and see if we can. They also have charity dollars. They I don't know one. how it would apply to this application, but they do. Yeah. I mean, they write things off, but maybe that's just the ER and hospitalizations. I don't know. I, I can look into that. Um, so maybe I should direct this to Brandy. How does this list of services compare with what we're used to? I, I don't know myself. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's been a long time. Yeah. Just yes, I know it's been a long time. Yeah. It, it was before um, Longmont, it was provided by the nurses at Longmont United, and they used to come here once a week yeah. and offer services, but I don't know what the whether there were charges or not. Um, but or, when they got bought out, they were no longer wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. And UC Health wasn't willing to do that because uh, they had their own clinic. But I was thinking in the interim, just something local uh, that people would, we would be able to tell them about. We've been pointing people to their doctors uh -huh. um, because sometimes they really need specialty care and yeah. their doctors are kind of routing them to, could <laughs> you just get a pedicure or do you yeah. need yeah. treatment? Yeah, the UC Health Clinic is specifically for diabetic pedicure. So what I like about them as well is they partner with Kaiser. I know depending on the, the, the plan that the individual has, Kaiser, um, Kaiser would, would cover a um, set amount of visits e each year. And she said it's anywhere between four to six, which she said uh, that is the average they see somebody annually uh, throughout the year anyway. So uh, if not, then they, they would be charged a $55 uh, fee for their visit. And they handle all scheduling. They handle all billing. We do nothing. We just provide this, the, the location for them to provide the service. So um, we would not have to create an RFP for that. It's just something that we can offer. Uh, through do you have services. that location? I, we have uh, <laughs> locations identified. Okay. Um, but depending on when we can get it up and running, is you know then then we'll look at where where we can put it. If it is somewhere we have openings here, but again based off their availability, right? The nurses. Um, then we can look at our schedule here. Obviously, Plan A would be here in our location. If not, you know, our Lashley location where we have plenty of space available as well would be another option. And we'll have to. Why did this not have to go through an RFP process? Because I thought that was one of the holdups over the past few years. And help me if I'm, I'm trying to remember how to respond to that. And I think this one is because we're not handling any of the money. I think that's really what it comes down to. We're not doing anything with it. Or the liability. Provide, right. We're just providing yeah. the location. Okay. So you're a broker. Yeah. <laughs> right. The, they, there is a history of them doing this in other communities. Um, it doesn't really involve city money. So it. what we were trying to do prior, I think, was actually contract, city contract with people to come in which was a whole different thing. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> makes sense, thank you. Yeah. This would still be a personal services contract? No. Or would, or would it not be contractual at all? It wouldn't be, right? Because uh, I think we're gonna want be, to put right. something in writing and we'll work with legal to, because there, I believe risk is gonna want them to name the city as additionally insured because they're providing the care in our in possibly one of our facilities. Um, okay, Ronnie, we're going to have to enclose the front porch here pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I say North Patio. Just not in the winter. <laughs> Maybe I missed it, but the, uh, how would you get the word out? So again, if this is something yeah, that we, we would like to move forward once we have details, then we would communicate it out through the go. Um, use the go and you know any additional resources we have so currently and I'll, I'll put this on the agenda for next board meeting as well okay. is the avenues in which we're looking at communicating uh, expanding our communication you know through social media um, and, and, and other routes as well okay all right and we can post this right like in the 
hosting rooms. Oh yeah. People. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. Marcia. So there is there is a new city web page. I mean, new in the last six mm -hmm. months, I guess, uh, that allows people to sign up for uh, email notifications. Um, and so I don't know how that works or you know how much how much earth moving you have to do to get a new sign up list uh, going but uh, for something like this that might be you know might be a little bit flexible in its in its scheduling because sometimes it's Lashley and sometimes it's here and you might even miss one because you couldn't get anybody uh, that would be perfect a mailing list because then people could say, oh, all right, there's a foot care clinic this month and it's on this date on La at Lashley. We, we have, that, that's what he was talking about earlier with David sending a, we have a bi-weekly email that people subscribe to. Okay, of that same service. It's, it's it, highlighting any services or programs here that we want to highlight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking this would be a specific alert. Yes, sir. So, I guess I'm concerned about needing this to be on the agenda again based on what you all hear. If Ronnie gets called tomorrow and they say we're good to go, I think it's a mistake if we put it off for a month. So, do are you okay with it? I'd like a motion on that. Okay. If we're okay with it. So, you're asking just to proceed with it? Yeah, that way we. We can get it going. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll entertain a motion. Anybody? I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, what is your motion? The <laughs> <laughs> motion is for the city staff to proceed with the foot care uh, program without any further input from the board. Okay. All right. And a second? All right. Make a discussion. Hooray. I'm sorry? <laughs> Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 That was the loudest aye I have ever heard of. <laughs> All right. We're done with that. All right. Thank you, you guys. Good job, Ronnie. Yeah. 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 Okay, do you have anything further, Ron? Um, I don't know if you want to go over just quick highlights. I know we got 15 minutes and then... Uh, yeah, we need to talk about the uh, boards a little bit too. Okay, so well, everybody has my written report. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, uh, we'll move on from there if that's okay. Yeah. Um, only that the films, for the, the tickets for the films are being shown in Boulder, not Breckenridge. Well, I was going to say, who's going to go to Breckenridge? Yes. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this type under yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 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 or long yeah. No, these the tickets were just for Boulder. 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 Right. Boulder. 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 great, but they're they're providing um, board as well. So the film and board. <laughs> so okay, we didn't really talk about board goals and it's in the calendar. Uh, we kind of sideswiped it several times. So this year's goals, uh, I'm just going to throw it open to discussion. What do you think that the uh, board goals should be this year for the balance of the year? We have upcoming agenda items, and we have ongoing goals, or at least we used to. But uh, what are your thoughts as far as the goals for this year? Balance of the year? I don't know about a specific goal unless it's to me our priority is to make the senior center as successful as possible. And as successful as possible? Yes, okay. even more successful okay. than it currently is. A board retreat? A board retreat? Do we have a board retreat? I don't know. To yeah. discuss some of these things as a group and have a work session on? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's been a group. It's not been a group. Never yeah. no. Not I in the last some five years. Some of the years. Years. do. I think some of the city boards do. Some do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some do. Yeah. In fact, the city's having a retreat this week, aren't they? Uh, gosh, is it next already week. Next, next week? week. Yeah. Oh, is it next yeah. week? Yeah. yeah, it's the 11th and 12th, I think. Thursday it's a good way to set 
things in motion and, and get staff support and plan in advance for that question. Does that, do these retreats have to be recorded? They have to be posted and open to the public. Um, Whether Longmont Public Media would choose to record that, that would probably be up to them, but I would assume that they would do that. And somebody, hopefully not a participant, uh, board member should still take minutes. Yeah. There has, there has to, you know. But, but again, minutes are fairly minimal, right? They can be. We discuss this, and usually you don't actually. Um, you gather consensus. You don't make motions in those meetings. Dave, I'm, I'm wondering if I could make a motion that, um, because of time primarily that we all think about and come up with one goal and to present it next meeting because I personally need a little time to think about it. Okay, that, that's a good motion. I want to put that as a form of a motion. Yes. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second, Sheila. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Well, that's a good idea, Janine. So that's a good way to do it. Well, I, I, let me throw something out, though, even though you've made a motion already. Well, one of the things we talked about earlier this week, last week, I guess. Uh, in the long term, with the trends, the demographic trends that you've shown us, you can't handle that here. Mm -hmm. You can't handle it with the staff you've got. Uh, so in the long term, as we're looking at a uh, significant expansion of whatever your, all of the things that you do, and I don't know what the time frame is, but uh, we're looking at, and I'll probably be long gone by that time, but we're looking, you know, we need to look in the long term, like 2020, uh, 2030, 2040, 2050, those kinds of things, given the, demogra the demographic trends. And, uh, you know, we can't do anything just right now except plant the seed, it seems to me. Uh, or maybe we go so far as to ask council for a survey or something. I don't know. I'm just blabbering right now. But the idea is we need to plan long term. Marsha. So you're not blathering. Um, partly uh, it's under consideration. So there's, um, if uh, the new, Expanded Recreation Center is um, is approved. There will be uh, resource rooms that are, will be available to senior services. Obviously, there's not a there's not an exact plan yet, but that's that's one of the values that's I think it's even on the survey um, for that area. So there is Lashley here, and then down there. Um, so that's uh, and that would be if it passes a, a you know a two to three year time horizon expansion, which is not bad. Um, and uh, and the other thing that's happening is that the city has kind of waked up and realized that we have meeting uh, uh, space resources that are underutilized because nobody's programming them. Right, mm -hmm. so like out of Isaac Walton, there's mm -hmm. a meeting room that's hardly ever used. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, it can can you confirm that, Jeff? That I will confirm that. I don't know that that's how I would describe it, but it is available. Yes. Yeah. So right, you mean that you're not sure that the inventory idea is official yet? I don't know anything about that. Oh, quite okay. Frankly. Um, but, you know, recreation does oversee Isaac. There are things there um, underutilized, probably a little, especially since COVID hit. But yeah. uh, some evening and weekend time certainly would be available. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, good. That was a good motion, Janine. I didn't know quite how I was going to handle that. So, it's, it's good. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, 
looking at the clock, it looks like we're not going to get through the whole of the agenda. Could well, I we, uh, actually, uh, okay, no. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? That we won't get through the whole agenda. Um, I would suggest, with people's approval, that the reports on the various um, area agency, and it's sort of aging, the Friends report, and so on, that they be written by the people who attended those meetings and then submitted uh, by email to everybody. Is that doable? I can send it to the chair or to Ronnie, okay. and then he can redistribute okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, send it, uh, yeah, send it to me. Uh, okay, that's, that's a good idea. Although I want to say something about my little tiny part. Uh, well, and also, I need to um, read your business. I'm Sorry? The, I am the um, liaison with friends, yes. and I need a backup. All right, who wants to be a backup? I want a volunteer to. Who wants to be a backup? I'll do that. Lucas, when, what does that entail? Going to the. It just entails going to the meetings, giving a, a, a brief yeah. overview of what we discussed at these meetings. And oh. then, yes, it's not, it's not a nurse. It's a shuttle function. <laughs> yes. Okay, so. Uh, did you get that, Ruth? Uh, Beth will be the backup? Yep. Okay. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to mention one thing, and I normally would let it go, but I think it's kind of important. On the uh, sus uh, sustainability, at the last meeting, they came up with something that's really good. And uh, did you sit in on that? Anybody I missed yet? that one. Okay. Um, Zach. Oh, oh, Lance, I Zach Lance, yeah, mm -hmm. he's the supervisor of that new sustainable unit that reports to Lisa Noblock. He's quite good, very good in my opinion. Anyway, they are in the process of forming an overlay map that's based on uh, a lot of stuff. I guess it's GIS <coughs> information from the county and census data and interviews and surveys like walking around the city to see what the temperature is. In a, different areas of town so they have an idea of what the temperature is in various parts and where there's canopies where there aren't that kind of thing now the reason i think that's really really cool is because you can overlap say for example the hispanic population those over 55 with those low income for example and see where it's really hot and you know that might have some implications as far as outreach is concerned, that kind of thing. And so I volunteered you. I said that you and I would be happy to attend an orientation to that and get it finished, which will be soon. So I think that'll be useful. That's not a, that actually that's my report for, for the sustainable implications. So jumped ahead on that. Sorry. All right. Any other business? If I could mention something, I know a number of people on the board have been interested in issues around solo aging, people who are aging without family or supports around them in the community, and what the impact of that is in the aging process. Um, and I have a flyer I'm happy to share with anyone who's interested about a needs assessment that's happening in March um, in Boulder County on this issue. Um, I don't know if this is something that might be a goal for the board. I will let you all decide that when you formulate your goals. I just know there's been interest from a number of folks over time. Is that could please be distributed? Yes. I could email it to yes. everyone if yes. that's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry, I missed the first part. What was the issue? With People who are aging solo without oh, solo. support okay. through okay. their aging process. Okay. No, no yeah. children, no family, no friends. Yeah, <laughs> Poor person. <laughs> I'll be your friend whenever you need one. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The regular business, have we done that? Yeah, I think so. We did the supervisor. No. Supervisor. Yeah. Yeah, we did not do report on this, right? We did not do Marshes. So we didn't, yeah. oh, didn't do the Marshes, I'm sorry. Right, and uh, I'm going to give most of the time to Art because what happened was that uh, Art and Don Quintana and her assistant, Michelle Gomez, uh, all met on the uh, uh, subject of getting more diversity on our city boards, starting with this one. Art 
has been actively networking about that. And then we also discussed some other things to do to make the applications more uh, accessible. Um, having bilingual applications on paper distributed around the city and start accepting those again. The clerk's office is willing to do it. And we came up with some other innovative ideas on public engagement training to be offered uh, and the idea of going to uh, uh, through the e for all which is officially a for totos. I can't, I can't switch into a Spanish accent very fast. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that, that they are going to uh, try, to, we're going to try to get them if they can find the time to disseminate information and on the public engagement training, which would be a two-way benefit for them. So, um, and then let's have Art comment on whatever else well, is coming I, up. Well, you know, I think the, the big thing on that is that uh, after talking to Don, we have the same issue apparently on some other boards mm -hmm. where we do not have diversity. And one of the things that was discussed is the possibility of a video uh, with myself and somebody who can speak a, little, speaks a little better Spanish than I do. And that way we have it in Spanish and English. And it's going to be to encourage people to get that diversity there and hopefully other people see it. And, they reach out to people to try to get them on the boards. Uh, and one of the other things we talked about is maybe to add on to the utility bills on boards and leads, but that, that one's gonna be a difficult one because of the different times, right? Well, but I think so, but- Different board time. Right, I, I think they know in advance when the window's gonna open. The uh, The difficulty with that was space, right. you know, so they're, I think that, that what they settled on is a little tiny box on the city line that just says, remember you can apply for boards and commissions, here's a website, you know. Um, and uh, so, so that, was, that was a good thing. Um, but uh, you know, we, we, we actually came up, Don recorded it, um, not me, so I'm not sure I can accurately list it, but, but we, we uh, discussed which boards are most obvious to target. And so, you know, you wouldn't target the airport advisory board, right? Because, you know, the population of people that are qualified for that board is very tiny. But something like Parks and Recreation, where, you know, everybody can, can participate as a good informant just based on what their, their activities are, uh, that would be a good board to target. Um, and then we talked families. about Facebook also. Yeah. Put something on Facebook. Uh, the other thing is, of course, that we brought this up at the last meeting, uh, having a booth at the Cinco de Mayo mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, have mm -hmm. applications on board. I mean, the hard copy of applications mm -hmm. and talk to people about it. Actually having some applications right here at the at the center, sure. if anybody mm -hmm. is interested, because there's some people that, you know, don't have computers or don't have that, but mm -hmm. hopefully would uh, might consider applying. I mean, this year, I mean, I thought about it, uh, is that if we get the applications here, that give them a reason to come into the center, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a ground thing like that. And uh, I just think that uh, I didn't even get a chance to look at Don's information that she sent us, but uh, I thought it was a very productive meeting with and uh, hopefully we can get a, you know, the, the diversity that we need on some of these uh, boards. So I you know, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, very, very productive. Sounds good. Thank you for so, doing that. I don't that. know if there's anything else that I would no, to say. There's a lot that we talked about. A little over an hour and then uh, uh, we yeah. better, but there's, well, sounds good to talk about. Right. Very good. I would like to acknowledge Art, who has really been you know, working the network in terms of, of finding immediate potential volunteers. We're, the, what Carmen advised us for boards in general was that it was going to be a three or more year effort to really move the needle. But Art's moving the needle for this board right now. So, uh, Thank you. And I couldn't go without Mark. Um, Carmen's up there. So it's a, it's a group effort. It's yeah, not one it was, individual. It's been good. But I, one of the things I want to clarify, how many openings do we have? Two, two to one. 
Two. 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 Okay, two. Nine. Nine. Okay. I don't know why we thought I thought one, but well, it's because one. the 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 backup, the the sec, what's alternate. alternate? There we go. Right, we did away with that. Right, the alternate has been moved, up, promoted to right. a, a full board member, so we have an extra member since okay. two years ago. All right, any other comments? Didn't make it this time. Either. Close. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further? No, we skipped out. Okay. Sorry, no further comments.